this is the best PC you can get for a thousand euros. If you're looking for the best PC for a thousand euros in 2023, you're in the right place. Today, we'll see what components you can get for a thousand euros and what performances you get. And spoiler, you get a lot for the price. Let's get started. First of all, let's have a look at the components. In this Corsair 275R Airflow, there are some spicy hardware parts. The core of this system is the MSI B550 A Pro, paired with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which is nearly as performant as the 5900X I have right here, which I've paired with the 4090. You can check out the video right here. Going back to the 5800X 3D, this thing has 8 cores, 16 threads, 3.4 gigahertz of turbo clock and 96 megabytes of L3 cache. This processor is freaking awesome, but it's really hot as well. This is why it's cooled down by a 240 millimeter only one from MSI, the Mag Core Liquid C240. Truly one of the most beautiful only ones I've ever used. Only the ones with the integrated screens are cooler than this one, in my opinion. We also have 32 gigs of RAM. I'm using these 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator at 3600 MHz, C18, just for this video, because they look cool. But I'm actually going to sell this PC with these other ballistics memories, also 32 gigs at 3600 MHz. But let's now talk about the star of this build, the 4070. I'm using the Gigabyte Eagle Edition, great for cooling, even though not my favorite from an aesthetic standpoint, but it handles its job greatly. And we'll have a look at the performances in a moment. Based on the Ada Lovelace architecture, it mounts the AD104 with a 4 nanometer architecture, a base clock of 1920 megahertz and a turbo clock of 2475 megahertz. It's paired with 12 gigs of GDDR6X memory at 192 bits with a total bandwidth of 504.2 gigabytes a second and a clock of 1313 megahertz. The TDP is only 200 watts, but I've actually undervolted it and it barely goes over 120 watts, as you'll see from the benchmarks in just a minute. As for the storage, I'm using one terabyte of NVMe Gen 3 from Silicon Power and for the PSU, the Sharkoon Silent Storm 850 watts. 80 plus gold. I think I've said everything about the components of this build, so let's turn the PC on and see how it performs. This is the perfect 1440p machine, so that's the resolution we're going to have a look at in-game benchmarks. Once again, both the CPU and GPU are undervolted, which means that they consume less power but get the same or slightly higher performances, just to let you know. Let's start with something heavy and challenging. Cyberpunk 2077. With everything set to high, but no ray tracing, we get a more than sufficient 84 FPS average, which is more than playable for a triple A game such as Cyberpunk. Going a step further though, with everything set to ultra, no ray tracing, we get 58 FPS average, but still more than playable. But let's see how it handles ray tracing. With ray tracing set to medium, we get 51 FPS average. Personally, I would sacrifice 10 FPS for the ray tracing, actually less, 7 FPS. It truly really makes the game look way more natural. Strangely enough though, if we run the benchmark at ray tracing ultra, we get 54 FPS average, more than at medium settings. At ray tracing overwrite, we only get 38 FPS average, not recommended. Another demanding game is Detroit Become Human, and the 4070 handles it greatly. At ultra settings, it ranges between 120 to 144 FPS, since this game is capped at 144 FPS maximum. It looks amazingly, and thanks to the high frame rate, you can truly enjoy the game. One of my favorite games ever, by the way. Passing on to F122, at 1440p, everything maxed out, we score 75 FPS average. But as we lower the settings to I, we score 229 FPS average, which means more than triple the frame rate. Almost triple the frame rate. What is wrong? 
F122, I don't know. But this is great if you can enjoy it with a 144 or even 240 Hz display. If you play eSport titles, you won't be disappointed either. Warzone 2 at everything ultra 1440p with DLSS, you get between 110 to 150 FPS, which considering how demanding this game is, it's an extremely great result. If you're ready to make some compromises, you can easily go over to 100 FPS. Another eSport title you may be interested in is Fortnite. In 2K, everything ultra, it makes between 110 to 140 FPS, medium between 150 to 180, and at low settings around 200 FPS. If you would like to see more games, let me know down in the comments which one would you like to see me benchmark my PCs with, and make sure to hit the subscribe button since you're down there. If you're interested in a couple of synthetic loads for the CPU, running Cinebench R23, the 5800X3D scores 13,738 points in the multicore test, which puts it close to a first-gen Threadripper, which was a thousand dollars processor when it first launched, and it has doubled the course. Mind-blowing. CPU Z benchmark scored 590 points in single thread and 5995.1 in multi-thread performance. Don't forget that point one. Completely different story. All things considered, this is truly the most balanced PC build you can get right now. Great CPU that's going to be capable of video editing, CAD, animations, and every workstation application whatsoever. And the GPU will grant you the possibility of playing every game easily at 2K and high frame rates. If you're patient enough, you can get a similar build for a thousand euros. That's what I paid for it. If you'd like to buy right now, I'm selling this PC for 1600 euros. You can check the eBay listing in the video description. Thank you so much for sticking until the end of this video. Remember to leave a like, hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell. It's completely free for you, but it helps me a ton. And I'll see you next week. Ciao.